So this one is uh, topic wise classified paper six uh, balancing experiment. Uh, you should go through these points before uh, solving the questions. The first question a student is uh, finding the mass of a meter rule or a meter scale by a balancing method. What he is doing, he kept a load here and the weight of the meter rule is also acting downward. So he placed a pivot between the load and the weight of the, the center of the mass of a meter rule. The weight is causing a clockwise uh, moment and the weight of the meter rule will cause an anti-clockwise. When their moments are same, so we can work out the force and from that force we can know the weight of a meter rule. But for paper six, you don't have to memorize any formula, just follow the instruction given in the question. So he places a meter rule on a pivot, then he places a block Q. How you identify it's a clockwise or anti-clockwise? A simple rule is that if you take, take your pen, hold it from where it's appeared to be a pivot, and apply a force like here's a downward force. So which direction it appeared to rotate? It appeared to rotate in a direction of a clock. That's why we say it's a clockwise. And you hold your pen at the side of a pivot and apply a downward from from other side. Which direction it will rotate? It will rotate opposite to direction of the clock. That is the counterclockwise or anti-clockwise. He places a meter rule on the pivot. Then he places a block Q at a center 95 centimeter mark. So here, he placed this at 95 centimeter mark, meter rule 100 centimeter or one meter long. A student state it is difficult to place the mass accurately at 97 centimeter mark. How the student could overcome this difficulty, you may draw a diagram. Like if I want to place this at, I want to make sure that the center is at 95. So how I can identify, so what we normally do, we can measure the distance from the edges and take an average. That's how it, uh, it can be done simply. So how I can make sure that the center is at 95 centimeter mark for this. So I will measure the distance from the edges. Like I measure this say 93 and this one is say 97. So if we measure the distance from the edges and take an average, so it will be 93 plus 97 divided by 2. So 93 plus 90. No, if the question is we want to place this mass accurately at 95 centimeter mark. So how we can make sure that it is at 95 centimeter mark. So simple rule, not calibrate the mass. Simple rule is we measure the distance from the edges and take an average. So when we take an average, we can identify like the average of this one, 93 plus 97 divided by two. So this will give us 95. So it means that the center will be at 95. But what if one of the value is at 92, another value is at say example, 94. So where the center will lie? Where will be the center of the mass if it is 94 and 92? Ninety three. Ninety three. So it will be ninety two plus ninety four divided by two. So it will be ninety three. So whenever a question is there in which we have to identify the position of a center of mass of a load, what we normally do, or sometimes the same question they repeat in a manner. They say that the load is too big compared to the meter rule or a meter scale. So how you will know that where is the center of the load? The same question, but in a different way. They ask that. Sometimes they mention the load is too big compared to the meter rule. Like this is a meter rule looking from the top and this one is a load. The size of the load is bigger than the or width of a meter rule is smaller as compared to the size width of the object. So how I will know that where is the center of this object. So we measure the, dis, the, the values of the edges. Like example, say we measure this is 90, this is 94. So where? The center will be, it will be 90 plus 94 divided by 2, which is 92 here. We don't have to find the center of the gravity or center of the mass. We, the question is how he will know that he can place at the 97, uh, 95 centimeter mark. The question is not 
The question is not to find the center of the mass of the object. The question is how student know that he plays this as 97 centimeter mark. That is the question. So they're asking, place the, the center of the mass of a cube at 95 centimeter mark. So how I will know that it is at 95 centimeter mark? So I'll measure the distance from the edges and take an average. So same way, if a question is the meter rule, width is smaller than the size of an object, the width of an object. How I will know where is the center of the mass of this object? Like where this, which position the center of the mass will lie? It is not necessary that the center of the mass will be at the center always. That's not always true. Because the object may have a regular shape. The object may have a regular shape, but it may have a non-uniform distribution of the matter. So it's not a criteria that regular shape object always have a center of the mass at the center. So how we know which point the center of the mass will lie? We don't have to do this cross. We just measure the distance. Like Read the scale from the edges. Like we read the first value, say it is say 80. We read the second value, say it is 84. So where the center is lying, 80 plus 84 divided by 2. That is 82. This is the same thing in the beginning of the topic, lecture notes. You will find like how you'll know that the center of the mass is above the point X. So how we'll know? We just measure the distance and take an average. Is it uh, clear? It's a one mark. So record the value or measure the distance. And take average. No, regular objects in IGCSE even, regular object does not mean they have the center of the mass as same as the center. If the term uniform is used, then it means that the center of the mass is there at the center, but not the regular. Regular does not mean that the center of the mass is at the center. If they say we have a uniform object, it means then it will be at the center, but not about regular. And what figure you will draw? You can draw this figure. You have a meter rule, you place an object and just show marking like one mark is say 93, another one is say 97 and then the center will be at 95. In the next part, the student keep the block Q at 95 centimeter mark and adjust the position of a meter rule until a uh, until the uh, adjust the position of a meter rule on the pivot until the meter rule is near as to being balanced as possible describe a method to find the point at which the meter rule is as near as to being uh, balanced as possible like how student will know that this is a point where this rule is balanced so what we can do like this is a meter rule he kept the load at he kept the load at 95 centimeter mark he's not moving the load so what he will do he will move the pivot and when he move the pivot he can move the pivot towards right and he will move the pivot towards the left so the points which to what you should mention like how it's a, just a practical application like how it can be done and how I will know that which point it is likely to balance. So I will move the pivot in one direction either towards right or left and find the direction in which tip like example say I start to move this pivot towards the left hand side. So when I move this pivot towards the left hand side there will be a point at which the, the ruler, like we are, what we are doing, we are checking a point 
uh, around which the pivot, uh, the object rotate clockwise or the meter will rotate clockwise or anti-clockwise. So example, when the pivot is at this position, say I say this is at position A, and the meter rule, because of this position, the meter rule rotate clockwise, like rotate clockwise. So now what we do, if we move the pivot, so at position A, when it was at position A, the pivot, uh, the meter rule rotate clockwise. Now what I will do, I will find another position, I will move the pivot until the meter rule rotate anti-clockwise. And then I can identify that the center of like, the point of the balancing, the pivot should be between these two points. So first we find a point where the pivot it's rotate clockwise. Then we find a point where it rotate anti-clockwise and point of the balancing will lie anywhere between the two points. Is it uh, clear this part? How we work out the balancing? Yes. So whenever you need, so the point of a balancing for a scale or a ruler, even you can do this a simple experiment right now, like take your scale and use your finger as a pivot. You place your finger, like example, if, a, if I want to find the center of the mass of this scale or ruler. So what I will do, I will place a finger at one position and I find where it rotate clock, say anti-clockwise. Then I move a pivot to another position and I will move this pivot until it was rotating, like it was rotating anti-clockwise. I move this pivot until it start to rotate clockwise. So now I can identify that the pivot should be placed between the two points so I can balance. So move the pivot to find It's the same thing as when we, there is a load there, how it will be balanced because there is a load and there is a weight of the meter rule. So what we do, we will move the pivot from one position to another. So for example, when the pivot is at this position, it was rotating say anti-clockwise. When the pivot is at this position, it was rotating clockwise. So now we identify that the point of the balancing should lie between them. So it's the same idea. If you have a load or without load, same way you can work out the point of balancing. So we simply find, like move the pivot and find the uh, positions or the point where it tips both ways and the point of the balancing will lie between the two points. And the point of the balancing lie between the two points. The next part, the student determine the distance between A and B, the center of a block uh, Q and uh, 50 centimeter mark, and also distance B, the center of a block Q and the pivot. So student determine as you, it's labeled already A and B. So this was at 95 centimeter mark. So from fifth, A is actually from 50 to 95, which is 45 centimeter. What about B? B is the distance from pivot so he repeated the procedure as you can see the values are recorded then you have to draw a table here uh, you have to plot a graph here 
plot a graph uh, for A on Y axis and B on, do not need to start, do not, do not need to start your axis from origin. What does it mean? That you don't have to start the axis from the origin. It means like, see the values here. We have to make for A and B. What is the minimum value of A? It's 25 and maximum value is 45. Where is B? The minimum value is 21 and the maximum value is 39. So I, simply I can start both from 20. So A is on Y axis and B is on X axis. And whenever one mark is always to label the axis. So A is there in centimeter, B is there in centimeter. Then the values, as they mentioned, we don't have to start from origin. Like I don't have to start with zero. I can start with any number, but my I should cover about more than 70% of this graph. So if I say this is 20. So 10 boxes, if I select as Or 20 boxes, if I select as uh, 10, it's it's fine. Like one, two, three. For example, 20 boxes, I select as 30, uh, 10. And then further to 20 boxes. So this is equals to 40. And same way for uh, the X axis is about like, we need about 45. I think the maximum was 45 for A. So if I start even with 20, I can cover till 45 as it will be about 50. It will be about uh, 45 in between. So if I start this axis also by 20, In case if any uh, box, if I miss, so uh, it may not be accurate. This will be 45. And what was the last value? Uh, it was, if it is 45, yeah, for 45. So I can label these axes. 20. Thirty. Forty. B in centimeter. That's twenty. Thirty. Forty. And just I label forty-five because one of the values is forty-five. And A is also in centimeter. So I'll share another link and continue this question.